This is the JP8 amplifier from Down for Sound. They've got a whole lineup of these amplifiers in an array of exciting colors. It's like a bag of Skittles. I bought this amp about six months ago, mostly because I like the way it looks. So now it's time to give it a review. I'll go over all the connections in greater detail later on in the video. So stick around if you want to see that. For now, I want to cover three important things before we do the amp dyno. Thing number one is this right here. This is the bass knob. This is the absolute bass knob I have ever used. The only downside is that it's a little bit bright and it tends to blind you a little bit when you're driving at night. So don't look directly at it at night. It's beefy and it's sturdy and it's got a good feel. It also has a power light, a protect light, and a clip light, as well as a display that will either give you your voltage or your temperature. I've had several viewers ask about the accuracy of the clip light, so we're gonna test that out a little bit later in the video as well. Now, the second thing is the look. There's nothing out on the market today that looks anything like this amplifier. It looks like a throwback to uh, US amps from back in the day, the old school amplifiers. I don't usually go for bright, flashy colors. I prefer a more subdued look, but Down for Sound was able to pull this off in a way that makes it look elegant and timeless. And the third thing is the plexiglass back plate. So if you wanna show off your amp guts, all you gotta do is install one of these upside down. Very few amplifiers are gonna come with a plexiglass glass plate. There are some out there where you can buy a plate and you can always make your own. But right out of the box, they included a feature that very few amps have. These three things set the amplifier apart. Nothing else on the market comes close to this, which is kind of frustrating because making an amp that's not ugly and has a few extra features isn't hard to do. But none of that matters if the amp can't make its power. So let's set up the DIY resistor bank and let's see what kind of damage this thing can do. We're gonna start off with the four ohm rating. At 1% total harmonic distortion, we get right around 527 watts, which is actually more than the official rating at two ohms. As we roll up to clipping, we get about 530 watts. Rock solid performance out of this amplifier. At two ohms, we get 842 watts. And as we roll up to clipping, you're gonna notice something really interesting. We get up to 916 and then the power starts going down. We clipped at 867 watts. We're seeing that because I don't have the amp dyno in peak mode. I've got it in real time power mode because I wanted to show you this right here. The voltage dropped to 13.3 volts. On the Down for Sound website, they make it very clear that you need to have a good solid electrical system in order to get the most possible power out of this amplifier. And I'm gonna show you why all that matters after I finish thanking my patrons with a special shout out to Dylan, Bo, and Baba. Time for the one ohm test. Let's see what this thing can do. Nine hundred and seventeen watts, but look at that voltage. It's down to twelve point six one. Roll it on up to clipping, and we get nine hundred and ninety watts, just shy of a thousand. But look what happened to the voltage. We're down to eleven point six seven. When Derek Williston tested this amp, he got over twelve hundred watts out of it. Let me explain why we're getting a different result. I'm using a 100 amp power supply and the owner's manual says not to run it past about 80% capacity. Now I'm not set up to measure my DC current draw. That's something I wanna add in the future, but I'm drawing more current than my power supply can handle. And so the battery is now powering the amplifier causing a big voltage drop. This is exactly what happens in your car when you try to draw too much current. So a test like this is a real good representation of what it's actually gonna do in your car if you don't have an upgraded alternator. 
Now, does that mean that you don't need to order this amplifier if you don't have an upgrade electrical system? No, that's not what it means at all. The amplifier will still run properly. You just can't get as much juice out of it. And that has nothing to do with this particular amp itself. Now, the only amplifiers for which that doesn't matter as much are ones that come with regulated power supplies. And they basically work by choking off the peak output of the amplifier so that when you have crappy voltage, you still get peak output. So I don't really see that as a good solution. The problem is simply that I don't have the capacity on my bench to get the full power out of this amplifier. The other thing to remember is that we're playing test tones here. Test tones are not what you're gonna to listen to in your car, you're gonna to listen to music. I've been running it in my truck for a month. I absolutely love the sound and I've never seen the voltage drop below 13. Speaking of running it in a car, right here are the connections to do just that. These are four gauge terminals, which is what you should expect for a thousand watt amplifier. Zero gauge is nice, but you don't need zero gauge to run this amp. The speaker outputs appear to be about eight gauge. Uh, there are of course a pair of outputs, but it's not a stereo amplifier, it's a mono amplifier. You just got two connections to make it easier to hook multiple speakers up to the amplifier. Turning around to the other side, you have RCA inputs right here. And you've got a row of LED lights for power protect and clip. There's a gain control, an infrasonic filter, and a bass boost. You've also got a control for your low pass crossover, plus the plug for your bass knob and controls for strapping it with a second JP8 amplifier. Speaking of the bass knob, let's take a look at the bass knob. It also has a clip light every time I show a DD1 in a video. Someone jumps into the comments and says that you don't need a DD1 because you can get good quality amplifiers that have clip lights on them this day and age. And that is absolutely correct. It's really a good idea to shop for an amplifier with a clip light. I've had a few viewers ask me how accurate the clip light is on this amplifier. Let's compare it to the light on the DD1 and see how close they are. Now the DD1 is in the background and out of focus, but you can still see when the light turns on. Off camera, I'm turning the gain up on the amplifier and there goes the clip light on the amplifier. It appears to be flashing. It's not actually flashing, that's just the refresh rate of the camera, not synchronizing with the refresh rate of the LED. Turn the gain up just a hair more and there goes the light on the DD1. So the clip light turns on just before the light on the DD1 does. So it's airing on the side of caution and I'm gonna call that pretty accurate and reliable. And of course, right here, you can see that the clip light on the amplifier and the bass knob come on at the exact same time. At the time of filming, you could hit up the Down for Sound website and pick this thing up for $200 shipped, which is a really good value, puts it around 20 cents per watt. Now there are cheaper amplifiers out there on the market, but they are cheap for a reason. To see one of those amplifiers and why it's cheap, click this video right here. And if you wanna catch my next video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. I'm the DIY Audio Guy. I will see you on the next adventure.